What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Three-peat, 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 1058, 1059, 1060, we are back. Goda is back, but there are plenty of people who are not. A moment of silence for all of the people of Lulusia. In this sweet madness, all this glorious sadness that brings me to my knees. In the Heavy pack watch. This is one of the most savage things I've ever seen Oda do, so I had to put the shirt on him. <laughs> I mean, come on. We're gonna spend most of this review, this analysis, talking about Lulucia and the implications of what happened there. We're gonna talk about everything else, but Thanks majority of the video. Thank Lulucia. you, AJK. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, look right here. What was I saying? Let's get into Lulusia, or sometimes translated as Rurusia, which also looks like, when you change the L to R, Russia. So this is essentially One Piece Russia. Uh, it also has some Transylvania vibes, right? Because Seki has these fangs. So fun fact, this island that Emu blew up, this is not the first time that we have seen this island. All right, we have actually seen it multiple times throughout the story. The first time was during Ace's cover story, which ran during Skypea. After Alabasta, Ace left the crew on a tip that Blackbeard was in Lulucia. What he ended up finding was Dr. Blackbeard. Classic Oda joke, the citizens, knock Ace into a nearby lake. He is saved by a young girl named Moda. She nurses him to health. He wants to repay his debt to her. She gives him a letter to deliver. The letter has to be delivered to a marine base. So Ace puts on a marine uniform, which maybe you've seen merchandise or anything like this, or you just remember the cover story. Ace infiltrates Marine G2 base, which is led by Vice Admiral Comiel. He has done absolutely nothing in the story other than this cover story and just existing during Marine Ford. Ace saves some secret documents from a ship. Then he gets the letter to Comiel. The letter is, hey, will you buy some of my milk? Because Moda has all these cows and she wants her milk bought. While Ace was running around in a Marine uniform, he did run into a couple of cooks. These cooks turn out to be Moda's parents and they lead the ship to come and get the milk. And then Moda is reunited with her parents. Boom, Ace cover story. The next time that we have any mention of Lulucia is during the reverie, all right? The princess, Komane, who we do see in this chapter, was captured by some pirates and was to be held for ransom. But Kobe and Help Meppo save her when the pirates are getting greedy and they wanted to go after Viola as well. So that is the same princess that was in that submarine. We later see the king of Lulucia in 908 during the reverie, talking about how is Wano even considered a country because it's not affiliated with the government. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. But the best instance of Lulucia in the story was actually chapter 904, the introduction to the Revolutionary Army commanders. That entire chapter took place on the island that Emu blew up. We are reintroduced to Moda in the actual story, the milk girl that saved Ace. She is attacked by Momohige, Peachbeard, and he wants all of their heavenly tribute. It's all they have because Seki is a terrible Wapa-like king that has oppressed his people. 
Bello Betty uses her pump pump fruit and gives everybody the energy and the wherewithal to overthrow their kingdom. So when Seki and Komani come back, that is why they are in those cells, because the people have started a revolution. They were inspired by the Revolutionary Army to overthrow their evil king and princess. Now, there is also a little bit of a discrepancy here, because in this chapter, Lelucia is in the New World, and I really need Oda to kind of put a map together, because the geography doesn't necessarily make sense for Ace to have gone through Fishman Island and into the New World to go to Lelucia right after Alabasta. Unless Moda moved, it was heavily implied that he was in Paradise, okay, the first half of the Grand Line because he had just left Alabasta, so it kind of put things into perspective that while Luffy was in Skypea immediately after everything in Alabasta, Ace was somewhere still in paradise at Lelucia. Now, during Skypea, we had the Ace cover story. Everything that we saw with Uranus and everything like that seemed very reminiscent of the Rigo, El Thor, similar things like that, right? You know, heavy Skypea vibes. The chapter that has the Rigo. That's during the Ace cover story, and it correlates with, you know, something of Lulucia and, and Moda. So I, I... Goda. Goda, Moda. <laughs> God mode. <laughs> I, I love all of these connections. Like, this is what I love about One Piece. Man, 904. Oda spent so much time... It, it seemed like he was teaching us about the Revolutionary Army commanders having us grow an attachment to them. But realistically, what he wanted from that chapter was for us to have an emotional attachment eventually to Lulucia. This was a kingdom that had to pay heavenly tributes, that had no money. When Peachbeard Momohige shows up and he's acting upon the orders of Blackbeard, this dude had a 52 million berry bounty, he was trash. When he comes in and he wants to steal Moda's money, that's all they got. They got nothing. Revolutionary Army's commanders, they just happen to be nearby. Has a conversation with Sabo saying, hey, you guys are at Kamabaka. Don't worry, we're nearby. Kamabaka is in paradise. Okay, but somehow in this chapter, Lulucy is in the new world. Now that seems like it's Oda trying to have Sabo be in the vicinity of everything that's going on in the new world. But it is very difficult to get from paradise to the new world. That was the whole point of the last arcs in the first half of One Piece because they had to get to Fishman Island. They had to get the ship coded to go underneath to go through. The only other way is above and over. That's not happening. So for Ace to get to the new world and the cover story, everything, this is a plot hole, unfortunately. Where Lulucia sits in the, like this, the map of the Grand Line, plot hole. But it doesn't matter because Lulucia isn't even on a map. Like Oda is literally erasing his plot hole right here. <laughs> It's totally made up. Pure fiction. It's fiction. It's fiction. We made it up. We made this one up. It's a made up tale. It's a total fabrication. It never happened. It never happened. This one was invented by a writer. <laughs> He's literally just Xing it. Like, oh, I had it here, but now it's here. Now, you know what? Now it's gone. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> Moda's parents worked for the Marines, based on Ace's cover story. Will we see Moda's parents find out about this? because they are from Lulucia. Will they have to be extinguished as well? Will they be a part of a revolution, you know, to avenge Lulucia? I would love to see something like that. Nonetheless, Lulucia, it's gone. Never existed. Fabrication. We made it up. It's fiction. It's an urban legend that never happened. No way. We got you. Not a chance. Not this time. It never happened. It never happened. We made this one up. It's fiction. And as such, the team of Marines that were intercepting Sabo's call were ordered to hang up that transmission before they could hear what Sabo was about to say. Because no one can know about Emu's existence. This is one of the best setups of any villain that I have ever seen. And it just needs to stick. These people have to be dead, with the exception of Sabo. The plot will allow him to survive somehow. 
I don't know, maybe he'll have saved Moda too. I, I don't know. And the dog. I can't have... <laughs> There's a panel of a dog that just, you know, dies. Not this time. It never happened. It's false. It never happened. It's a fake. During the stream, people were suggesting, are they getting abducted into some sort of UFO or, you know, whatever. Are they getting noped? I hope not. You know, people were drawing comparisons to when uh, Beige got absorbed up into the air. Was it 594? Somewhere around there. We do need an explanation for that. Or maybe we don't, but I don't think that this is it. This is an explosion of the highest degree. This is a nuke. It's over. They're done. Aside from the casual genocide, this was a feel-good chapter. Felt like One Piece. Luffy and the gang hanging out on the sunny. And what have I been preaching for, you know, the past couple of months that I wanted at the end of Wano? Wanted the crew hanging out on the sunny. And I cannot complain. We've got Nami with the Robin vibes, you know, learning a thing or two from Robin. You know, the pose that she did when she joined the crew after Alabasta. She was also doing it in her little flashback. Uh, in, you know, the 1020 area, you know, it reminded me also of the chapter after the end of Alabasta, when they're upset that Vivi didn't join, and Zoro's just like, well, you should have just dragged her onto the ship. And then they, you know, call of names, and <laughs> Luffy's insult to Zoro is, Yon Toryu, four swords. Like, he thinks that's an insult. Here, they're calling him Green Kaido, Green Mom, and Jewelry Bonnie is here! What did I say? By 1060, we would be hanging out with the crew, figuring out where we're going. We still don't actually know where we're going, but we are on that course, which is basically what I was saying. Now, another one. Barrel Boys, your stocks have skyrocketed. Anybody who got in on Barrel Boys early and voted for Caribou? Congratulations. You won. Good day, sir. What does that mean for the story? We'll get into that. Still want Caribou to be Crocodile's contact, not Blackbeard. 1061, looks like we're probably going to get some information from Bonnie in terms of what happened at the Reverie. Was hoping that it would be information from Vivi or Sabo. I, you know, Sabo, hey, <laughs> who knows what's going on there, right? But Vivi, love to see the queen mentioned in a chapter, right? Glad to see that the crew was thinking about Vivi, mourning. I'm right with you, Luffy, right with you, Nami, right with you, Sanji, let's get Vivi back. The only thing I like that Zoro did in this chapter, because he was basically shutting down all hopes of rescuing Vivi or finding her, but he did put respect on her saying that she could handle her own. Power scalers, anybody who says that Vivi can't handle her own, boom, the boy Zoro just puts you in your place. She's great. Narratively speaking, things are leaning towards Vivi actually being captured. It's uh, not what I want. Still want her to be with Leo and Sai, Beaver card, on her way to Luffy. But the context of this particular chapter does set Vivi up to be captured. Why? Because Zoro is putting her on the same parallel as Ace. So whereas where we were at this point of the story in the Paradise section in the first half of, you know, One Piece, right? We basically had just finished Thriller Bark. Luffy learns about what's going on with Ace, but he decides that he's going to continue on his journey because Ace is his own man. It's not until Amazon Lily that Luffy makes the choice, the call, to go after Ace. So essentially, we probably have one more arc that is going to be Sabaody-esque, then an Amazon Lily, then Impel Down, and the Marine Ford. So four arcs left? I'm kind of gauging that. Wano was Thriller Bark. Wherever we go next is the Saba Odi. Then we've got Amazon Lily and all that. So maybe a video on that to kind of stretch that out and really fine tune and see where we're going. But first let's find out where we're going here. It's a winter island. Is it Elbaf? Maybe, but any everything that we saw of Elbaf wasn't really winter. Granted, the first time we see Big Mom getting dropped off by her parents, it was snowing on Elbaf. Could this be Kaido's favorite island? Potentially. We know it's in the New World, and we have Caribou on the ship. He's been there. There was a revolution going on. There's a lot of stuff pertaining to revolutions and the Revolutionary Army. So 
could it be? Or was that particular island, Kaido's favorite island, blasted away like Lulucia? And that this is what's going on here. Did Kuma slap Bonnie to Kaido's favorite island, but there was nothing to get slapped to because Uranus or whatever this power that Emu is controlling already hit this island. So there was no polarity or however Kuma's power works, there was nowhere for Bonnie to go. So she just got stuck in this whirlpool for three weeks and somehow didn't drown. And then now the Straw Hats conveniently save her. Not out of the realm of Oda logic. Would have been really cool if Bonnie was getting slapped to Sorbet, but Sorbet is in the South Blue, so not the case here. Is Vivi captured because she is an ancient weapon? We have been talking about this. I have been probably the leader of Vivi is an ancient weapon for many years. That would be a big W for us, but also not necessarily where I want the story to go in this particular case. Because if we're going to go into Dark One Piece, that would mean that Emu captured Vivi and then forced her to control whatever this Sky King is, and then Vivi used that on Lulucia. So the character that is all about saving people, every life counts, all of this, just think about everything that she fought for in Alabasta, and then Emu breaks her will and forces her to destroy Lulucia and kill hundreds, if not thousands of people. That would be heartbreaking. I don't think that Oda has it in him to do that particular storyline. That would fill the plot hole of why wasn't something like this used on Ohara? Why wasn't this used at Eni's lobby? Because the timing wasn't right. Just like Shirohoshi was going to be born 10 years from now when Roger was at Fishman Island, you know, so he couldn't do this, he was too early, et cetera, et cetera. Vivi hadn't been born yet, so it all kind of potentially lines up. Oda, once again, does a pump fake with Luffy's dream. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. But we get to see everybody's reaction to it. We know that Shanks cried from it. Seriously, every chapter that has Shanks in the past, you know, 10 chapters that have had multiple Shanks references, RIP all of the evil Shanks theories. Never liked them. There's no way. This dude is looking at Luffy as if he is that guy. He is the, the key to it all. What Roger wanted. Shanks realizes it. Crybaby Shanks. I still believe that Luffy's dream ties to world peace in some fashion. You know, he may have a childish way about addressing it, but ultimately the goal is one piece. P-E-A-C-E, -E, all right? Everybody is free. Luffy believes that freedom is being a pirate. Maybe it ties to that. Also, my other favorite part of the chapter was the color page. A reference to one of the very early color spreads. Immediately clocked that on the read. I was just like, oh wait, Oda's updating this. Because he did another version where, you know, it was just the core five. Now it's updated, it looks awesome. And there's also a difference with the bear, because the bear had different writing in the old one talking about freedom, now it's talking about liberty, right? These are the themes of One Piece. Freedom, liberty, liberation. It's tying it all together. The number 16 came up a lot during the stream. That is representative of how many rays of lightning that this Uranus, you know, came down with. It's a holy number. We've seen 16 pop up a bunch of times. 16 holy threads was the final attack that Doflamingo used against Luffy. When Luffy went back to Marineford with Rayleigh and Jinbei, right? Rayleigh told him to ring that ox bell 16 times. Why? Because Rayleigh knew things about the Celestial Dragons that Jinbei and Luffy did not. If you ring that bell 16 times, someone's gonna get pissed, all right? They're gonna know what it means. Go ahead, do it. Do it 16 times. Oda loves this. All right? If you take the zeros out of the chapter, one six, and the chapter came out on September 16th. Quick maths. Oda and his numerology, you gotta love it. Where else will we see this number pop up? I wanna thank everybody that supports the channel, supports the streams, all of the members, okay? Everybody that just recently joined, 
RS, Hide Your Heart, Jose, and Atake Tato. All the people that rejoined, Chin Ho Wong, Emmanuel Blue, Shooter Ali, and my guy, Tyrone Will, Guild Ty Zoro, the lavish bracket man. I love this. And we're not on break. So we're here, 1061 this Friday. Also coming this week, the Wangju video, the Rocky Port Incident video, all tied together, looping back to Laws and Sword, coming soon. Boom. Like, comment, subscribe if you are feeling the vibe. Peak. 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 Get you. Savage. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Sounds like a no. Yeah. <laughs> Barely.